Welcome back to Buds and Brews. Today's brews are coming from Not Your Fathers, their root beer. This brew was released in 2012 in Illinois, initially sold in its 19 and a half alcohol by volume incarnation in kegs at local bars and liquor stores. The brewery then did two small bottling runs of a 10.7% uh, variance in 22 ounce bottles in November of 2014. In 2015, they partnered with Pabst Brewing Company to help distribute Not Your Father's brand nationally. So that's what made him popular. Let's uh, let's pop this thing open. A root beer. I don't never actually had a, an alcoholic root beer, so I'm kind of excited to taste this one. With me today is my guest and really good friend Daniel. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you for having me, bro. You're welcome, man. What have you been up to? It's been a while. It has been a long while. Dang, anything I'll be able to get it open. <laughs> I just bought that thing yesterday. Oh, good thing, because I don't know what we would have done. <laughs> Ooh. So, what's it smell like? Ooh, it's literally smell. like root beer. <laughs> it smells like root beer. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, bro. Thank you. It's pretty root beery. Yeah. It's kind of got a bit of a, a tang aftertaste afterwards, you think? Oh, you yeah. Think? It's like a mug. Like mug one of them beer. mug root beers? <laughs> that so. is dangerous. <laughs> Not Your Father's Root Beer is a traditionally made brewed beer with botanicals, spices, herbs, such as wintergreen, sarsaparilla, anise, cinnamon, nutmeg, vanilla bean, and honey. What do you think of this, man? I think this is really good. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to pick up some of this. I don't know. I'm not really sold on it. I mean, it tastes like root beer, but it's like, is it not really root beer? I mean, you can definitely tell it's a root, a root beer. beer Oh, yeah, I guess it might make a good root beer. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think have you ever had a great. root beer float that's had beer in it or alcohol? No. No, me either. Well, looks like next time we're going to have to definitely have some ice cream. What kind of ice cream do you think? We'd have to go vanilla. <laughs> I don't think strawberry or like banana split would work great with this. What about one of those very, very vanillas? Like the vanilla bean. That would probably taste really good, bro. Yeah. Especially since this already has like that, like, I don't know. It's exactly like root beer. I taste that aftertaste, but it's not even that, like, strong. Well, in 2013, it took second place for a beer of the year. <laughs> and uh, it's got a 94 out of 100 rating by the Beer Advocate. So, Jeez. whatever that means. <laughs> I'm learning so much. <laughs> Sounds there's like this actually, beer's been through it. There's actually some controversy that this beer isn't flavored naturally. Mm. Yeah, there's some people that think that all the all the flavors added afterwards, and then there's actually some people who don't think it's actually a true malt beverage. I think they just need to release a root beer portion, and we'll definitely be able to tell if that root beer's that good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think maybe they should just uh, drink beer, right? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ruining if you go everything. about your day, if your day is ruined because you think an alcoholic root beer is fakely flavored, then I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you need to take a deep look at your life and see what's going on to make you that upset over something so minuscule. Shoot, it's not yours. I don't know why you'd be so upset. Well, it says it's my... Well, I guess it's not your father's. <laughs> yeah, it's not your ordinary root beer, that's for sure. Right, right. It says drink something worth remembering you think you're gonna remember this definitely definitely are you yeah. sure is this the only one first and only one this is my first one of these ones yeah yeah okay all right and this one's really good founded in 2010 but i guess they started home brewing in 1988 so they had a, a few years yeah, under right. the belt before which it's kind of what you want you want to kind of know what you're doing before you dive into something kind of crazy that they're more famous 10 years ago i don't hate it i don't love it you don't know yet i don't know yet like that deer off open season it's like, it's <laughs> you know what i'm talking about when he eats that chocolate bar I, I, well i've seen open season but it's been a few years man it's been a few years i think i saw it when i was in college trying to hide out 
in some chick's dorm room hide out from the RAs. I think. <laughs> oh man. We watched Open Season and <laughs> what was the other one? <laughs> I can't remember the other one. God damn it. Open Season sounds like the perfect movie to hide away to. <laughs> yeah. In a college dorm. Dude, it's so innocent. They, especially if they find you, they, it's not like they're gonna be mad at you. Like, we're just watching, we're watching this open season, man. What's what's so harm in this? We're not partying, we're not doing drugs, we're not fornicating yet. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, we've only been ten minutes into the movie. Come on, come on, man, come on. You know, you watch Toy it. Story next. Toy. <laughs> Have you seen the latest Toy Story? No. I haven't either. I've been trying to watch them in order, but I usually start it, and then I go outside for a minute, and then I just, I don't want to watch it when I come back in. So every time I start it, it's always the first, like, 20 minutes of Toy Story, the first one. <laughs> you know what would be wild? Mm-hmm. If they did a, a live-action remake of Toy Story. I mean, I don't know how I'd feel about little, <laughs> little cowboy men running around with Buzz Lightyear, you know? As a live action. <laughs> I think Sid would be absolutely terrifying. Yeah, he'd be like Roderick from Diary of Wimpy Kid. I bet he'd look like that with a whole ton of freckles. Man, I've never seen that. Uh, anyway, yeah. I'm sad. You're big into skateboarding, right? You're big into longboarding. Yeah, skateboarding's always fun, man. Don't you, uh, you take videos of that stuff, don't you? Oh, yeah. Where can they find those videos? Um, on Facebook. On our Facebook, my little brothers, Dylan Nestlins, or like on Instagram, Stay Up 24. You know, you can give me a follow. Or uh, even on YouTube, honestly, I think it's just under Dylan Nestlin on YouTube. But, <laughs> you know, we got videos everywhere. We just do it for fun. Yeah, I'll try and tag you in the comments or description. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like we're game places. Your first plug? Is that your first plug? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably this is I don't know at first I was kind of nervous but now I'm now I'm getting yeah, you, you kind of just falls into the groove and yeah, at stuff first just like, kind of flows dang what I'm in you? the studio right now I don't know what's in the I gotta <laughs> I don't got no hot 16 like I'm nervous <laughs> when did you start skating oh man like way back in middle school like even maybe even like elementary school but really big into it in middle school I had some cool like little shredder friends growing up yeah yeah we'd be everywhere on those boards day and night cold i look at the winter when i'd skate like me and my buddy chucky i just recently uh, started talking to again we just jumped on some boards and we'd just go it'd be like 20 degrees out and we'd be trying to kick little things and now i go outside in the cold and it's just like yeah i'm going back in yeah i can't handle this i'm getting more and more intolerant of the weather it seems like every year cold this well, and every year, every winter, it seems like I find myself working outside <laughs> every year, all winter long, and oh. I hate it. And Mason, it kind of helped with that, but it still got pretty cold in there every once in a yeah. while. Yeah, it was all right. So what kind of, did you ever get to a point when you were trying to skate, you just wanted to give up? Mm, not necessarily give up, but give up on whatever I was trying for the day. On or, the trick you were trying, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, there's other things I could be doing just to, like, because it's such a free thing to do, because you can't be angry and just, you know, if you're angry on a skateboard, the only person you're going to hurt is yourself. No matter how mad you are, you can't try to, like, you know what I mean, go and tackle somebody your hardest or go and punch something, you know? Mm -hmm. You're screwed. (laughs) So you just got to try to find that peace and then, like, okay, look, I can't do it right now. I'm going to come back to it here later. And if not here later, then, you know, there's always tomorrow. I'm not going to try to, like, destroy myself. That's kind of where you build the basic building blocks of, like, motivation and, like, uh, self-determination and building goals. When you you set that at a young age, it really kind of helps to build your character. Kind of helps you to want to achieve your goals, right? I mean, does it kind of... Plus, the the skater community is such a, a strong community that you guys have got each other's backs it seems like I mean, <clears throat> the, the videos I've seen of, like little kids on the skate park being mentored by an older person that they've never met in their life yeah that's I like seeing stuff do. like that and I wish we could we could take stuff like that and kind of 
kind of apply it to a lot of other things in life. Yeah, I wish like people or like we need that camaraderie, yeah. you know. Yeah, definitely. We need people really just to be themselves more or less. Because I feel like everybody's trying to hold like a higher level or where they should be. When really everybody's, like everybody's always trying to be fake. Everybody's always trying to impress somebody. Yeah, or everybody's, be something that's totally some, not yeah, them. Trying to conform to something. So you gotta, you gotta kind of just break away and be yourself. There's nothing wrong with being weird. Mm, I'm weird. Shoot, dude. You should hear me and my brother get together. Sister-in-law. <laughs> we get weird, man. He said we get weird. <laughs> we, get, we use these freaking baby voices and these different like, <laughs> accents yeah, you got for me words. There. That sounds funny, though. Like, we'll all It'd try to true. say, like, a word in the most accented way possible. So like, I think you got it. I think we got you got to share it. We got this word or this name. That I've been trying to say this name for years the weirdest way possible. Buford? Buford? <laughs> I don't even think I've heard <laughs> this name before. <laughs> I like shot, it. Man. Try to say it in the weirdest way you can. The weirdest, mm-hmm. most accented. Buford. Try to say it in like a Russian. Buford. Sound like, you sound like the count right there. Buford. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. <laughs> I tapped. <laughs> I think you would. I've never heard of it. Good day. Oh, that one was. <laughs> Dude, we'll just go off. That was like a laser. <laughs> you made a laser <laughs> Buford. Buford. <laughs> a laser Buford. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Me and my little brother, it's more like we always end up doing something and it's always just a competitive just fun thing. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great, man. My little brother's three years apart from me, man. We grew up competing all the time, and that's all we ever did was we either fought each other or we competed against each other (laughs) over just the stupidest stuff, generally. He said generally. That's how it is, though. I mean, me and my brother never really, like, fight or anything. We just, like, we're almost the exact same person. Like, if we're, if something happens here or, like, if me and him did have, like, say I didn't clean up my part of the room or something... He'll just, you know, go and do his little thing for a little bit, and then we'll come back and, like, end up playing WWE or, like, going right. skating, you know? So you guys are pretty close. Oh, yeah, definitely. We'll probably live together forever. That's good. That's great, man. <laughs> My brother and I, we lived together for a long time. And then when I moved away, it was rough, man. It was really, really rough. Yeah, that's We uh, We grew close one summer up in Wyoming. And uh, he had to go back to finish or start his freshman year of high school and I was gonna start my my senior year of high school and he left and I oh man I had such heartbreak I couldn't handle it and I just had to move back in with my mom uh mainly just so I could be around my brother again and I really wanted to play football with him (laughs) yeah because he's a really good athlete I mean he had scholarships everywhere for all kinds of shit Jesus and so I wanted to be a part of that and so we kind of we grew real close, and then I get there, and we really grew apart, <laughs> which is which is weird because it kind of went the opposite direction. But then when I went up to college, and then moved back again after I dropped out of college, he stayed with me for a weekend one time, and then we just really connected. And then ever since then, that was about 2009, so like 11 years ago. Ever since then, we've been super close. I mean, he's he's the closest person I've ever been a part of. It. I've, that I have in my life by far so I don't know what I would do without him I feel that yeah yeah absolutely we, I mean yeah I mean I guess me and him had a fallout one time but it wasn't because of like anything serious it was just you know right. I was like not home no more and stuff type of thing you know mm-hmm. what I mean mm-hmm. kind of just living life and he was still younger but as soon as I ended up moving back in it was just like we picked right back up where everything left off that's you know? good back in the natural order of things it's funny how that kind of seems to work work out if things are are gonna work out meant to be then they just kind of fall into place yeah just a little bit of push a little bit well you had to work at everything so i mean everything takes a little bit of work hey to some people it just falls in their lap yeah well well, more power to them man that's awesome i wish something like that would happen hell yeah you know i wish i won the powerball it's hard Without to have a, a ticket. It's hard to have a podcast called Buds and Brews when you don't really have a whole lot of buds. <laughs> but we're that. making it. We're making it. 
We should, the whole point of this. We so. should get Spider Man in here. Spider Man. We we'll get Spider Man. We we'll get the Flash. We'll be, <laughs> he said the I'll Flash. call up my buddy Thor if he can make it over here. He said that his uh, his his transportation is a little broke down by now, right now. So <laughs> that's probably not gonna work out. Shoot, he's probably gonna have to use rocket ship or something. Hey, I actually ended up gra- getting a few of those. What are those cards? Yeah. Where'd Remember? you get them? The comic cards? Yeah, from like? some from that from that. I got Options, a collection of cool comic cards I put in a picture frame he's looking at on my wall. Pretty cool. Oh, yeah. You know what my yeah, daughter's favorite him. superhero is? Spider-Man. Spider-Man. You, you got it. You Everybody's got it. Everybody's Spider-Man. It seems like Spider-Man's cool. Isn't she it? likes the Flash, too. It's because he's fast. It's because he's fast, and she thinks that she's super fast, too. And she is. I bet she gets faster with every change of shoes, huh? Oh, the best. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I got the turbo. I dude. got the turbo threes on. Dude, how fast <laughs> do those make you? Jeez, Did you I even like run I fast did. yet today? Dude, honestly, when I jumped, I jumped the <laughs> other day to try to touch this branch with my little brother. Yeah. I haven't jumped, I guess, in a long time. Cause I jumped and it was like gravity just sunk me down quicker than I went up. Your body's like, whoa. Yeah, it was like, goddamn, you've it's been years, son. So I'm, um, I got pretty, pretty good mad hops, you could say, for a little white boy. <laughs> I was a high jumper in high school. <laughs> and so the other day, man, uh, well, I was at Mason I, and I tried just like, ah, you know what? I think I'm going to try to jump up, touch this sign. I think I can touch this sign. I jumped up. I, I hit that sign, man. It surprised the hell out of me. And then it's like I fell forever. I was like, oh, and it hurt. Dude, it hurt my knees and my, it hurt my feet. I'm like, As oh you were going down, you're just good like, good ah. Like, wait, I jumped too high. No. <laughs> like, I really tried on that one. <laughs> you ever try to hit your head on the ceiling? Uh, when houses? I was younger, yeah. Did you ever do it? Uh-uh. <laughs> I can jump up and hit the ceiling. Stand I'm not going to try. I feel like, I feel like my abdomen and my legs are about to split off apart. If but I, I always, like super I always mess my, mess my stuff up. I like really compress my spine because I, sometimes I jump, I put a little too much into it, man. <laughs> you have worst <laughs> war memories from jumping the pole Jeez. thing. What are you in the office today for, son? Uh, I don't really want to talk about it. I I say, I to, like, stop jumping so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our next brew is from Glacial Till Brewery. It's their Craft Caramel Apple Cider. This brew is 5.5% alcohol by volume. They, uh, this is made out of southeast Lincoln, Nebraska in Otto County, near the township of Palmyra. So they started this in 2003. So this brew is made on a vineyard, a winery. Glacial Till Vineyard and Winery takes its name from this soil. The terrier can further be defined as a north sloping hillside, providing a cooling effect on the grapes during the hot, dry summer. So both water and cold air drain to the creeks and the ponds located nearby at lower elevations. So that's kind of cool. It's not really a brewery, but a winery. It became (laughs) open to the public in the summer of 2009. Huh, that's still kind of new. So, right on. 11 years ago. Yeah, I try to get a Nebraska brewery on the show. Well, this is Since exciting. we are in Nebraska. Pop open the ball, or the can. It almost smells like a super, super light beer. It smells like a green apple when you cut it open. Really? I don't smell any of that. Hmm. Well, cheers, buddy. Cheerio, yeah, man. Ooh, that's got a crispy bite to it. Wow. What do you think about that? I definitely taste the caramel. Wow. Didn't you? Like yeah, that? I can taste just about everything about a caramel apple in that. That was weird. I, even taste, I taste a little cinnamon. Cinnamony a little bit. That Maybe that's just that me. Cider. Yeah. Ooh. That's pretty good. This is something I drink after work. It's relaxing. It's like a... Like a just chill drink, you know. I don't have kids. Feeling, if the kids were to go to bed, this is that type of drink you'd have to hit. You tasting any of that caramel? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I taste the caramel anymore. It's like every drink is a little bit different. It, I definitely taste apple cider. Huh. This is interesting. 
super sweet it is really sweet if you uh, are sensitive to sweet things uh, I don't know if this is the one for you <laughs> this has got to be the sweetest beer I've ever drank in my life I know I'm about to be bouncing off the walls after this one yeah how much oh my god how much it almost like there? turned my stomach though that first drink just because we went from like a like a mild sweet I guess from that not your father's to this like it almost but makes it your it almost makes your cheekbones hurt at first right yeah it's sour. like it salivates <laughs> your your saliva glands <laughs> but like after a few drinks it's definitely a relaxing kind of settles you settle into it mm -hmm. it's pretty good you just sip on it but i think i'm gonna probably down this so i can go back to the night your father oh yeah go ahead chug it oh my god he's chugging it right now <laughs> this is gluten free and it's seasonal so if you care about gluten hey don't got it so which one do you like the most, best? As of right now, because I think it's just like a mood thing. Yeah. I'm definitely going for the, the root beer, the Not Your Father's. But this drink is starting to grow on me. So if you, if you just went to the store and you saw a root beer, they're not, they don't have to be alcoholic, and you saw an apple cider sitting next to it, doesn't have to be alcoholic, which one would you pick? I'm definitely going for the root beer. Yeah, me too. Apple cider is good, but you definitely have to be in the mood for it. Apple cider is good when it's hot and in a mug, cold, and I don't in a think can. I really had hot apple cider. To be honest, I just pull it out the fridge, what? pour it out, and drink it. Is that even cider if it's not hot? I well, I guess like... obviously not. <laughs> we got it cold right here. Well, it's called Glacier Till. Glacier Till. Well, I guess this one's called Caramel Apple Cider. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, this is a, a, a bit of a different episode. We're kind of going with the more like a candy episode. <laughs> a candy episode, definitely. The, the sweet tooth episode. Yeah, my chapstick even Coca-Cola cherry. Ooh, you know what? I have a rule against chapstick. <laughs> I never share it. I never share my chapstick, and I never yeah. use anybody else's chapstick. The only time I'll do that, like, if it's like my dad, and he has, like, that Carmex where you just squeeze it out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I still won't. Like, yeah, no, I'm still not won't even do that. Cause my whole family, aside for a couple of them, they get uh, cold sores, and I I vowed like 20 years ago, I'm like I'm never gonna get these, and I've always taken the precautions to not get it. I don't, I don't got, I ain't got herpes. He said I don't got herpes. No, no, none of it. Jeez. Well, I got a question. What's up? What's the first game, video game that you ever played? The very first video game I ever played. Yes, sir. Honestly, it's probably like Pac-Man. Pac-Man, you pretty good at it? No, I never, I never even, I've never finished a, a game. I always got really bored with it. See, what is this? Any game? game? You just... Not a Pac-Man game. Oh, I was about to say, no. I'm very I've never finished a Pac-Man Pac game. <laughs> oh, man. Like your three lives? I don't even finish my three lives, no. Jeez, yeah, that's <laughs> terrible. What's your favorite, like, video game up to date, though? Other than Gran Turismo. Well, it's been a pretty good one. We'll just, I'm going to leave out PlayStation 2 to yeah. modern. I'm going to leave out those games because those games just don't compare to old games because old games, compared to the new games, old games are way better. Well, I don't know. Graphic wise, terrible. Graphic wise, I'm not, if I had to pick play a game over like Destiny 2 or Grand Theft Auto over like say Super Smash Brothers or some, something like that oh. like I'm I'm probably not going to be picking Super Smash Brothers Super Smash Brothers is fun don't get me wrong I love it oh. but if we're talking about like a Mario right. even a modern day Super Smash Brothers like though? Contra Cause yeah probably new... probably even a modern day oh. I, I don't know man I like beautiful games he said, he said I do games. Destiny, Destiny 2, 2 is a crazy. beautiful game Elite Dangerous is a beautiful game Grand Theft Auto is a beautiful game I play them because I can keep playing them and not get bored and you don't always have like certain missions to always defeat or adventure right but it's I've been always really hooked different. on God of War God of War is crazy because it's almost like a history lesson you know even though you gotta look up stuff to double fact check it but do you listen to audiobooks? Um, Ever? Not really. I mean, I have like once or twice, but like nothing like fully that I remember. Not like how you do. 
I remember you get down and watch <laughs> I do, I do. It, man. Anyway, Audible's got, if you remember, they have a free God of War audiobook. And I download it. It's about 10 hours long or so. Jeez. And, which is pretty short considering most audiobooks. Like some of the Harry Potter books are like 20 hours long. Like Order oh, of the okay. Phoenix is 30 hours long. Jeez. I don't know if I could listen to something like that. Though. If you think about it, though, when was how long does it take you to read a book? Um, depending on how like hooked I get, I just picked up reading, you know, like yeah. not too long ago. But it doesn't take me very long to get through a book, you know. I guess it depends on how on it. how many times, how many hours a day. But what, when I was in high school, reading three or four hours a day, man, it still takes me like a week to finish a book. Especially a, call, a Harry Potter book. I yeah, could you imagine? Reading. Reading a book in 17 hours? Like, if you, you think you could read a whole book in a no. day, in one day. I mean, if I had nothing else to do, and that was literally my only objective, <laughs> like, I bet it's possible, but, you know, some people gotta eat, I might have to take a dump, I'm not taking the book with me, you know? <laughs> right. Like, life happens. <laughs> but I guarantee there are those people out there that can, like, just those fast readers, you know? Yeah. People who can just intake that information. I think some people would just be BSing, but... I think there are some people that can read something like that quicker than most. Do you think you'd ever be a... If someone was like, hey, Daniel, come to narrate this book, and we'll, we'll, we'll give you $1,000. Oh, yeah. I but it's it. like the Lonesome Dove book that's like four inches thick. And you can't mess up. If you mess up, you got to start it over. you got to start the line over again. I you you think you could do that? You think you'd do that for 1000 bucks? I mean, it'd take me a minute, What's but I'd price? stay up. <laughs> I mean, shoot, if you really think about it, if you were still able to keep the job and then somebody told you that, get off of work one night and just focus on that, just waste one night, you know, mm -hmm. and make a thousand bucks. If you've made it I this far on the podcast, in the comments, how much would it, would it take to pay you to be an audiobook narrator for something like Lonesome Dove or Harry Potter? <laughs> That's the first question for the audience that I don't really have. <laughs> you know what would be really crazy, though? What? Getting paid to do something like that for Harry Potter, knowing that they make up words. You know what I mean? Oh, right, spells, right. I would have such a hard time. Like, even what's their the movie going to make like, it sound like, like? Even the names, right? You know? I'd just be making stuff up. Fake it till you make it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd put it out. Nothing wrong with that. There's actually there's a lot of stuff wrong with that, but we won't go into it. <laughs> I mean, the worst they can tell you is, yo, you don't really know what you're doing. And you just look at them like, I thought I did. Well, I thought I did. That's when you <laughs> ask them, like, hey, will you teach me? Teach me. Yeah, and be like, I already got the job. You know you don't want to hire no one else. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you really want to go through this whole process again? Yeah, you want to meet more people like me? You know somebody else is going to come here acting like they know what to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> at least I'm trying. <laughs> I'm gonna try for you type thing you know what I mean right right so dude you down to uh try our liquor of the evening I this bottle down. looks so intriguing it just looks like this is a a witch potion <laughs> yeah it does look like a potion <laughs> yeah right so this is a uh, uh a bourbon whiskey from Willet Pot Still Reserve. This is a 47% 94 proof spirit. It does. This bottle looks cool. Yeah, this is wild. Let's see what does it smell like? Oh, she smells rough. Oh. She does smell rough. I am not much of a whiskey drinker. In fact, I really don't like whiskey. I feel like whiskey killed my grandpa. <laughs> so oh. I'm not a big fan of whiskey, but we're gonna try this. <clears throat> Honestly, I don't notice much of a difference between this and Jack Daniels. It's somewhat smooth. Oh, the aftertaste is kicking in though. I feel like it's not as hard though, like on the chest. It's not quite, huh? It's more like, I don't know. It's definitely something that would be good with some oh, yeah, Coca Cola. Oh yeah, the kind of comes up through your nose. A bit of a caramel and vanilla. A little, I definitely little taste spice. the vanilla. Yeah, that vanilla is kind of coming through stronger, stronger, stronger every second. Let's see here. Definitely got that, that 
classic bourbon smell. From K in Kentucky, huh? Yeah, based out of Kentucky. Is this something you'd probably ask uh, at the bar? Hey man, give me some of that Willet Still Pot Reserve. <laughs> oh man, if I was so, having a really bad day, yeah. That so would probably like fancy. That'd probably end, end the night for me. So in 1936, Thompson Willett founded the Willett Distillery. 1936. I mean, it's not not very old. It's not like not very Count new. Dracula had this yeah. before. I mean, it's got a whole lineage of prior distillers. I mean, he had a whole family of distilleries. Broke away in uh, 1936. They uh, put their first barrel into storage in 1937. So that's pretty cool. I don't know, man. I, I, <laughs> I'm just sold on this bottle, man. I've never seen a bottle like that. I don't think I really have either. Especially for being a little bottle, they definitely put the time into it still. Dude, this little bottle. It's 10 bucks. It's a itty bitty little bottle. This is a. Uh, how big is this bottle? I don't know. I feel like my chapstick's bigger than it, though. 300 milliliters. Anyway, but I think a normal, a big, a bigger bottle is 100 bucks. I saw online, 100 bucks. So it's definitely not cheap. Definitely something I wouldn't spend 100 bucks on. Though. It's not entirely expensive either, but as far as whiskeys go, you know. <laughs> Honestly, they all kind of have like that same taste regardless. Like if you're drinking it, you're drinking it to get messed up. Yeah, dude. I mean, maybe some people have the taste for it. I don't think I could get home from work and just, you know, be tired. Down a fifth of that. I just, oh, uh, God. No. Wake up from work it. with the biggest headache. Oh, it'd be so rough. The and next, I'd be picking up ugh. cucumbers like, oh, my goodness. Man, the DC's been a definite, like, it's been a, it's been a job. So you work at the Walmart Distribution Center, and you do, what do you do there? Filling up pa uh, pallets with uh, food. <laughs> Do you ever with, drop uh, anything? Have I dropped something? Yeah. Yeah, dude. I was driving out, and I accidentally, like, turned too hard, and my whole, like, a whole column fell down. Oh, no. And it was terrible, but by the time I really even got back there, there was a couple people already helping me out, so. That's good. I mean, it's a really good job. I mean, compared to anywhere else I work, you don't really get the help like that. Even if they don't want to help, they're going to help just because it makes the day go better, you know? Honestly, man, I did not feel that when I worked there. I ran a forklift there for a couple months, and oof, I felt like I was all alone. First of all, no he one, said I was no alone. one spoke my language. No one talked to me. Not only did I feel alone in like, in like a different country, but I was freezing my nuts off. You were in the freezer? Yeah. yeah Negative 30. Ugh, I, I don't think do I could it. talk in the freezer either, though. I mean, I thought it'd be okay, because I work in the winter, outside in the winter, every year, it seems like, but, yeah, no. dude, ugh. after a while, man, it just, it just wears on you, it negative wears on 20. you, negative 20, and then the, the ice cream freezer's negative 30. Yeah, see, that's just, that's putting your body at risk, you know, I feel like you're asking for it if you work in there, I couldn't oh, do it, I pass by, and I'm just like, Ooh. three times a night, man, I felt like I got frostbite. Unbelievable. It was terrible. It was so terrible. <laughs> I, just, uh, I couldn't ice take it. Ice back there is the real question. Well, dude, like the, the whole steps they have. You get a step means you you messed up. Just putting a pallet in the wrong spot counts as a step. And I got two of those in one day. Dang. I was like, <laughs> they were watching. Like, man, I'm. I've been here two down. months. Like, there's no way I can stay here. <laughs> like, there's no way you guys are gonna keep me here. Yeah, whatever. They fired me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm a good for. I'm like one of the best forklift drivers out there. I have to kind of toot my own horn there. And that was ridiculous. Sure. Like, yeah, absolutely ridiculous. That is crazy. I, I don't do. really know many of the forklift drivers. I mean, one of them came in through the class that I came through. So I know him. And he's pretty cool. Shout out to Sheik. <laughs> but other than that, like the other dudes are pretty cool. Just I just stay out of everybody's way, really. Yeah, just I do my to, thing. I can do that too. I work at a like a tractor salvage yard. Oh yeah, how's so that just, going? I just pull parts all day. I know I've asked you, but 
I love it, man. I get a wrench all day. I get to use all my tools. I love it. He said I got my wrench all day. I get a he wrench all day. He just wanted a wrench. Yeah, man. <laughs> he said I don't want a hammer. I want a wrench. <laughs> oh, believe me. I get. I use my hammer. I get to use my hammer. Oh, jeez. Well, you're swinging it like Thor, so I'm pretty sure none of it really bugs you anymore. No, I'm pretty deadly. Pretty deadly with a the hammer Shoot. these days. I ended up buying this uh, this uh, system, right? And system for what kind it's of like Nintendo, but oh. it's the original Nintendo cartridge, and then it has the uh, Super Nintendo, and then it also has the Sega Genesis all in one. So you that's can like awesome. buy any of the games and you just plug, go in. Like to that's some so people, cool. that's you know like, hey, we knew that. But to me, I seen that the other day. I bought it and it was like I've been like the happiest How person in the world. It was only a hundred, well, ninety nine, ninety nine, but it was like a hundred for bucks. three systems, though, right? Basically, oh. all in one. I mean, right. it's kind of crazy that the uh, the games are worth basically what newer games are worth. But, <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. worth it at the end because yeah. like I bought this uh, Carnage Maximum game and it came with the case to the Sega Genesis. Really, I felt like a kid who would have bought it back in the day because it came with the case. You know what I mean? I opened it, had all the original stuff inside. That's cool. And every day, that's all I've been playing. You get a taste of nostalgia every day you plug and turn that thing on, huh? Dude, I go, I play. I've been playing. You enjoy it <laughs> a lot, huh? I just bought a PlayStation 4 again. I just, I... Yes. I had to I'm, play my Elite Dangerous game. I just, I love that game what is so it? much. Elite Dangerous, have I ever showed you? I think you have, but what? We're talking about the running back times, to the people. But, um, it's that space simulation. Where you go and you explore planets, stars, and stuff, and it's huge. It's massive. Like yeah. The scale of this game, there's 400 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. And it was a free game? Oh, no, no, no. I had, I had to buy it. For, for sure. sure. I'll show it to you sometime, too. I remember, but it was very vivid. It was like an old school, like you clicked one of the things and then it like took you, right? Yeah. yeah I, I kind of very, like, I remember, but. It's fun. You can play combat. You can... Like, dude, we've known each other for a while. <laughs> that, I think that was like when we first like started hanging out. Yeah, I've, I've been known here you now for like... two years now. I think. Yeah, two years then. I've known you about, for two just years. about. That's cool, man. Yeah, you're one of the it's realest safe. dudes I've met since I've lived here. I mean, it's been a while since we've seen each other. Well, you're the OG. <laughs> you're my OG he friend. Said you're my OG friend. <laughs> you're the first buddy I made, man. Oh, that's crazy. I had to bring you on. That's cool to know, too, though, because, like, I remember, like, well, I was just, like, it was funny because we didn't even know each other. You were just like, hey, man. I was like, oh, hey, what's up, man? And we, like, off and on talked throughout the day. You know what I mean? Dude, didn't you come and over then, to my house? That yeah, I came over. Night? And Did. then you showed me the yeah. studio, and I was like, dang. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is insane. It was cool. You showed me the cards for, again, you know, we had one of the old school sessions, and then just after that, like, we had a group of people yeah, coming like with a us all the that time. Us. Oh, yeah. that, that was crazy. That was the shit, man. That was fun, though. I felt so rich in friends. I felt Jesus. so sociable. <laughs> you had too many friends. You were like, uh, Daniel? No, no, no. I got to talk to him. No, no, no. I'm going to talk <laughs> to him now. We'd be There'd be people playing the game, somebody playing with one of your guitars, somebody playing <laughs> with the technology machine stuff that you guys had going on in the back. Dude, it was great. And all this happened like 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, in dude. an apartment complex. <laughs> our uh, our times were so bad. Like, dude, it's we were uh, vampires for real. We were, dude, <laughs> I, I I was a vampire for seven six seven years, man. I, I yeah. finally got on day shift. I got the sun on my skin again. I got tan. You know, the last time I worked outside during the day, I was working on our farm, and that was forever ago. I haven't, done, I haven't been doing that for a long time. I feel a lot healthier. I, I feel that vitamin D. I do, <laughs> man. I feel healthy. so much better. You don't have that dust in your nose every night? No, man. And, like, I'm waking up with the sunrise every morning, it seems. I'm going to bed with the sunset just about. I feel like a normal person again. <laughs> yeah, you're not, like... It's nice. Shopping when it's late. Not that this COVID's yeah, going on. I feel like a crackhead. Yeah, man. Trying to go get groceries <laughs> at four in the morning at a gas station sure. because Walmart's not open. I bet. I bet there's crackheads that go to bed normal people hours. They're just crackheads right. during the time they're, they're just awake. Normal, normal head crackheads. <laughs> hey, man. I feel like some people. 
I feel like some people have that mind where like they can do anything like not no like normal stuff but I feel like there are people who can do certain things that other people do but it just affects other people differently like these people they could be you know what I mean like the day walkers <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these well, people are just on their whole like a whole new level but they still choose to live an unhealthy lifestyle you know but kind of like it, I bet they well kind of like a, a functioning alcoholic versus a, a, basically a non-alcoholic functioning alcoholic <laughs> they're so incompetent the functioning Somebody's alcoholics like, drunk all the time but yet can do stuff is responsible has conversations the other side of the coin dudes asking for rides borrowing money showing up late to work not not showing up to work not paying his bills man that just shows that really anything can ruin your life you it know what really i mean it really does man i mean that's you can insane. let you can let anything be a vice hell you can let comic book collecting yeah you can let <laughs> podcasting be a vice every one of these podcasts cost me a little bit of money i got to go out and buy two cases six it's pack and i got i got to go out and i got to pick a a liquor that all costs a little bit of money it's about 30 bucks an episode if i did that every day you know dude i wouldn't be able to afford rent pay my bill anything can be a vice man you could tell them be like look yeah it's the alcohol or it's or you, you know the drinks that we don't finish you can give to your landlord i bet they take like hey man you want to <laughs> what if they did like two-thirds full I like, this, <laughs> I need this, to find, one, this one's empty already i just need to find an alcoholic landlord Hey, you ever watch the uh, Trailer Park Boys? No, I didn't really need to because it, it seems like yes, I have a lot of friends that ask me the same question. I mean, at first, the season one, it's a little, you know what I mean? Because it's like older, but it gets, it's funny. It What's is really it funny. about? Just Besides dudes Trailer that live Park in a Boys. Trailer park <laughs> and like they just do like random stuff, go to jail, get out cool. of jail, don't know how to talk proper English at all, like you know your normal i guess stereotype type trailer park people i guess you know what i mean right <laughs> it's pretty funny i like it i got a question for you yes this was something i was thinking about all day what makes us innate in innately naturally good or want to be a good person to make good decisions to not murder somebody because they have something you want or simply just not to, like torture animals Jesus. rob a bank <laughs> like what makes us not want to do that stuff i feel what like you think? for some people that end up actually doing that weird stuff you know like i feel like they really don't got nothing like have anything to hold to you know like for you or i like I have family and stuff that I love. Like I ain't gonna right. They're doing that out of necessity. But I'm saying, yeah. I'm saying, if you it. were born and then you were raised in a glass box until now, not knowing anything, oh, dude, you get I'm out of that wild. glass box because you didn't know anything else. You don't. You didn't know that being in this glass box sucks because you don't know anything else. That that's all you know. You get out of that glass box. You meet your first person. What make what's stopping you from just killing that person, or being mean, or being something that's not nice? Where do you think being innately Curiosity. nice comes from? Curiosity, because like you still like even if somebody were to upset you, like say you didn't live in this box, but you still understood the human lifestyle or like what people do. I feel like even if somebody were to make you mad. You're still curious to see what follows up or what they're gonna say next, especially if they're not right in front of you. Cause you know you still got your like your trolls, your internet gangsters, your people who just type away, you know, but will never like face you. Like you always want to know what's gonna happen next, especially if you're, you know just curiosity. If you're curious. Curiosity yeah. could take you anywhere. Like if you didn't know much, I bet if you've never seen a human, you'd be like scared. And right. you might you might go off on this person depending on if you were alarmed, but just like meeting a different animal, you know they're gonna be very like curious, but they're gonna be safe. You know, and so that brings me to the next point of animals. Animals don't really seem to have a conscience like we do. What separates us f from the animals? Because we know what we're doing. We have that that narrator in the back of our heads. We have that something telling us our conscience is telling us what we're doing 
what we need to do. do you like think, they do too. Do you think it's just a, a product of your situation, a product of how you're raised? And Definitely your environment. And a product of your environment. Yeah, like if we went to an island that's never been touched before, that curiosity thing is going to peak. Those animals aren't going to probably attack us right away. And if we're nice to them, I bet they'd be like decent. But these birds and these squirrels around here, like North Platte, you know, most of them aren't going to run up to you or like, you know, like Cinderella stories type stuff. But I bet in the country and stuff, like baby squirrels and stuff that have never seen a human, I bet they, like, some would be curious enough to come up to you. You know what I mean? Right. And give you that kind of benefit of the doubt. But it's just depending where you're at, what you're doing. Like, I bet if you moved to somewhere that was unsafe, and you heard somebody knock on your door and you didn't invite nobody over, you'd be one scared person. Yeah, absolutely. But if it was a safe neighborhood, like, you know, you're going to just open the door carefree. But if you have to care, then it's just going to be one of those things like, yeah, yeah I'm not going to be that curious today. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking this the other day, like, why, why we feel fear, why we feel pain. And why we worry so much? Why do we? Why are we so scared to die? We feel pain because it's our body's telling us, "Hey, man, I want you to not do that again." And we feel fear because we don't want to die. We don't want to experience pain. But why is it got to be a negative thing? Why? Why is it got to be a negative thing? Why does pain? Why? Are, why do we associate pain as a negative? negative feeling why do we not like it how come when we touch something and it burns us we don't like it how come we touch something and it pinches us and we don't like it we can't we can't just like break through why does that feeling make us not want it <laughs> i feel like it's you know what one i mean those things like i bet if you were in a saw movie <laughs> and getting pinched is gonna save your life you're gonna let that thing pinch the heck out of you but if you're just living normal life and something just pinched you, it's going to be like more like, oh, dang. But the whole scared thing, I feel like we put fear in our own minds. Like, just by, like, seeing something, like, living in a town like this and you see somebody die in front of you, yeah. you're, it's going to probably scar you for life. But if you grow around that every day, you see that every day, it's probably not going to have as big of an impact on you because right. that's your daily life. That's something that's just, it's normal, you know? Yeah. But out here, to people that it isn't normal to... You know, they might try to live off of it, but to just, you know, like somebody like you and I, we're going to be like, dang, like that's, that was bummy. That was, pretty, you know, we're right. going to be pretty upset about it. It's just one of those, uh, just, yeah. It's because like, even, even animals, right when they're born, babies, right when they're born, they cry. They feel that pain and they don't like it. Do you think they feel the envelope immediately? I, I think so. That's probably what I'd cry. Yeah, oh. I, I think so. But and this is just pure speculation. I just I like to think about these things and then expand upon it. It's just it's just, hey, just thoughts. Wrong with pain. I think Curi curiosity. Feeling pain makes us uh, not want to do the thing that we're trying to do. We feel fear because we don't want to die. And I ask myself, why don't we want to die? What's so bad about dying? It's and like a video um, game. Well, do you don't remember being conscious before you were born? No. Nope. What makes you think that you're gonna feel it after you're born, after you're after you're dead and gone? Maybe you didn't have any. Memories. What if what if being alive is just a total culmination of all of our biological processes, and this is just something that we can, something that's just happening. We have no control over it, and we don't want to die because then that's it. There's nothing else. Nothing. As far as we know. Can you? Can you imagine nothing? Can you imagine there being nothing? Because I can't. That I can't wrap suck. my head around there being nothing. You gotta look at it like a cartoon. You know when the whole thing turned white and they can hear their voice and they're just it's just them inside of there? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know, maybe something that's, stupid that's an interesting and crazy thought like that. Because like, there is nothing but yet there's something. Maybe there is something, I mean. And then the whole thing, like maybe when you're a baby it's because like you never had any thoughts or memories prior. But when you're dying, you have all those memories, those happy ones. And maybe that's why you're hurt. It's not a fear. It's just you're hurt. You're like scared to like disappoint or like fail or like in a video game. 
you can continue nowadays, but I've been playing these old video games like you die, like you have to restart from right, the beginning. That's it. So you think, you know, you don't want. You think after we we die, we restart? You think it's not necessarily a game over, but yet no. we just have to uh, we put in that next credit and off we go. Technically, kind of yeah, like what almost like that, a loop. What do you think that credit is? Do you think that credit costs anything? Do you think that credit could also be something called karma? Maybe. Or maybe you live the life over and over until you get it right. Maybe not as the exact same yeah. person, color, race, whatever. But I feel like maybe you come back until you get whatever you were meant to be here for right. And right. Once you get it right, then you... Maybe it's like a different level. Again, like a video game, you know? Soul clouds. Where <laughs> incarnations or lives. Say our life right now. This is our current incarnation. When we die, our soul... It turns into like a little seed that drifts back up into the cloud of mm. soul seeds that, that gets recycled for every incarnation that you have whether it be here on earth or in some other crazy dimension or I mean maybe on earth but a hundred years ago who who's to say that time is linear and it's going in a straight path that's progressing no, almost like time travel time yeah, that'd be crazy. In our own instance, like we have our own instances. Like none of our lives are all connected. It's our own instance. <laughs> this is getting deep, man. That is pretty intense. That is crazy to think about. At the end of it all, I just feel like no matter what it is, like death, you lose. You know what I mean? You're game over. So while you're still here, you got to keep doing what you got to do. You got to try to just... You know what I mean? Succeed on whatever crazy idea you got, you know? Like, it's simple who knows, as man, this being might the be best it. stamp it, dude, you know? This might be it. Yeah, you what if, know. like, this, this is what you were put it. here for, to podcast. That was your that was your goal by your creator, the, your director, whatever you want to go by. That man, that person, that woman, whatever, they placed this role in front of you, and you never succeeded in it. And if your role was to podcast this whole time... And you finally did a podcast, then maybe that's all you had to do. Yep. And now you might reach that next level. Yeah, because who decides if Because who does meth their whole life and succeeds in something? I mean, it's possible, but for normal, everyday people, out of the, say, just here in North, North Platte, there's like 37,000 people. Hmm. It'll be Most a very people low don't level. smoke meth here. But it'll be successful. a very low level of people <laughs> that it will be I'm successful. sure there's some methods out there that are very successful. Anyway. Jeez. So we'll end it on that note. Thanks for being a part of my podcast. Thank you for having me, bro. Thanks for coming on. Later, everybody.